There we go. Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hogue, author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. If you are already a VIP member, watch your email. We will do a Zoom meeting. We're going to do our first Zoom meeting. Zoom is software, right? We're going to do our first VIP member meeting. It's going to be all video, so I can see your face. You can talk to me. I will talk to you. It'll be very nice, very, very nice way to do it. I have been playing with Zoom, and I think I've got it figured out enough that we can have our VIP meeting soon. So join my VIP program. You can try it for just $1 if you want. If you're not a member yet, join now and you can join our meeting. And this is one of the benefits. Of course, you get the VIP lessons, but you'll also be able to join our meeting and talk to me, maybe. What else? Uh, oh, yes. I need your success stories. I think I'm going to do some interviews. I'm going to use Zoom and do some interviews with successful VIP members. Some people are a little shy about making their own video. I understand, but uh, it might be easier if I just chat with you. So one-to-one, -one, just me and you. So like, I'd love to interview Carol, for example, Ibrahim. Um, actually, uh, that whole group, that whole superstar group of VIP members that I have talked to, I'd love to do individual chats, interviews, just short, maybe 15 minutes or something, with uh, each of you, record them, and then... Let new members watch those so they can be encouraged, right? All right, let's get to our topic today. Our topic today is homeschooling basics. Homeschooling basics. You all know that uh, I like to encourage homeschooling. Homeschooling is the common word. Homeschool, homeschooling. It's the common word you see for basically teaching your own children. This is just what it means. I think a better a better phrase would be home education. It's I think it's a, that's a more accurate, a more positive <laughs> way to say it, home education. But homeschooling, this is what you'll see. This is what most people use. This is the word most people will use, homeschooling. And it just means you do not you do not send your kids to schools, government, private. Instead, you teach your own children. And of course, this was the way children were educated for thousands of years, <laughs> okay? They were educated at home, in the home. The family stayed together. They didn't split up the family and send the kids away all day. Today, we're going to discuss some of the basic questions. It's a... It's a question and answer section from a book about homeschooling. And this is good because people always ask the same questions about homeschooling. They ask the same questions. It's always the same ones all the time, the same worries. So this book answers those questions quite well, I think. Now, the name of the book is Homeschooling, Why and How. Homeschooling, Why and How. Let me see if I can find the name of the person who wrote this. Oh, by Gail... Nagasako. That sounds like a Japanese name. Gail Nagasako. Probably a Japanese-American. Okay. Homeschooling. Why and how? Answers to common questions. Let's just jump in. I'm going to go through each of these. And she does a very good job of discussing the common questions, the common worries people have about homeschooling, teaching their own children. And she answers them very well. So let's go through it. And I can share my screen for a little bit for those of you watching 
on video. Where is it? Ooh, here we go. Share my screen. And boom. Now, oh, is this? We're using this camera. Okay, whatever. All righty here. Okay. Who can homeschool? Anybody. That's an easy answer. Next question. Won't my child fall behind? Okay, so this is some worry. Some parents might worry. Oh, if I teach my own children at home, they might get behind, right? They might, uh, maybe their reading won't be as good. Maybe their math won't be as good. But she says that homeschoolers have more freedom to choose what they want to learn. When they are tested, they tend to outscore their schooled peers. This is very important. So it's actually the opposite. Children who are homeschooled, teach children who learn at home with their parents, one of their parents or both, actually do better on tests. Their reading is above average. Their math, their math skills are above average. So in other words, they have better academic performance, right? Basic academic performance, even, even in academic tests. So if your child is, say, is 10 years old, and you compare to other 10-year-olds, your child's homeschooled, the other children are in school, your child's reading level will probably be higher or will become higher than the children in school. And this makes sense if you think about it, because when you homeschool your children, when you teach your children at home, they are getting so much more attention, individual attention, even if you have, even if you have five kids. Or even if you have eight kids. Still, imagine in school, the classrooms have 20, 30, or even 40 children in one class with one teacher, maybe an assistant teacher. So in a school, no child gets much individual attention. It's impossible. The teacher cannot give individual attention, individual teaching to each child. They can't do it. They just teach to the whole class. And, you know, some children do well and a lot of children don't. But when you teach at home, you can focus on each child for a lot of time. You can give them a lot of private time. It's like having a private tutor, a private teacher. And so that child gets so much more quality teaching from you at home. And this is why homeschool children do better. They have, they're better at math, they're better at reading, and then later as they get older, they're better at all the other topics as well, subjects. How do I get started is the next common question that she answers in this book. How do I get started homeschooling? It's a good question. Some people feel like, oh, it's too much. She says, I recommend sit down with your children and assess your interests and goals. So this is an interesting thing, and this is one of the things I love about homeschooling, especially with uh, children that are a little older, is that they participate. So in school, right, they, they have no choices. A kid goes to school, and the teacher just tells them what to do. There's no discussion about what they're going to study. There's no discussion about anything, right? They go, and every child gets the same thing. But when you're homeschooling, uh, this is a great first step. You sit down with your children and say, hey, we're going to homeschool. We're going to learn at home. What are your interests? What do you want to learn? What do you want to learn about? What are you interested in? What are your goals? Now, for a small child, like a seven-year-old, their goals might be, you know, who knows? <laughs> but of course, with older children, they, they're going to have more, you know, adult level type of goals. So obviously, you adjust. Depends on the age of the children. But still, even with a young child, a young child might say, I'm interested in insects. I'm interested in bugs. Great. You could start your homeschooling uh, with that child, focusing on bugs and insects, 
And of course, they're going to have to read books about bugs and insects, so you're getting a lot of reading. And if you're creative, a little bit creative, you can even uh, think of some ways to use numbers and counting and even higher level math and connect it somehow to a project about bugs, right? You can get creative about this. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But the, the, the key point is that you start your homeschooling focused on what the child is interested in. And of course, you want to find more than one thing. So not just bugs, but you know, what are your interests? What do you like? Of course, you know your own children already, so you probably already have some idea of what they are interested in, what they like. But uh, it's still, I think, very positive to discuss this, to sit down with your child and discuss it, because then they feel part of their own education. You're sending a very important message, and the, the message is this. Learning is active, right? They are part of their own learning. They make decisions. They need to be independent learners, right? You're gonna, this is your goal. You want them as adults to be independent learners, to go out there and find answers and keep learning their whole life, their whole lives. So even if your child's five years old, you can have a very simple discussion with them about what do you want to learn? What are you interested in? Let's, it's, you know, let them feel that it's a team effort, that you're doing it together. Of course, you're the adult and you're going to direct things. But it's not, you're not like the dictator. They're involved. You have to involve them and let them be part of their own education. And as they get older, they will become more and more and more the boss of their own education. So this is very, very good, uh, a good way to start. And it's good to do this during their entire life, their entire childhood as they're learning. Okay, next, uh, the next common question, how do I do the daily work of teaching my child? Like, so what do I do every day as the, as the parent? Okay, now this is one where, again, we've discussed this before, but there's a whole range with people who homeschool. So let's say on one side, there are people who, parents who do homeschooling just like a school. Right, like it's very similar to a school. They have, they might have some textbooks. Uh, they follow very specific subjects, you know, math, science, history, whatever. Right, and it's it's very organized. There's an, a very specific schedule they have each day. Right, we start at nine o'clock and we do this and we do this and we do this. It's very, very, very organized and detailed and quite similar to a school, but still better much better. So that's one, let's say, one end, one extreme. The other extreme, on the other side, are parents who are very, very loose, very, very relaxed. It's very, very flexible. Each day might be very different. Uh, these people are often called unschoolers, unschooling. And these parents, they don't use textbooks. They don't usually have specific subjects each day that you're studying. Instead, they usually focus on projects, right? Like, so example, bugs. Well, one of your kids loves spiders. So, all right, fine. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to focus on spiders, read books about spiders. Uh, as the parent, you'll find a way to teach some basic math <laughs> using spiders. Maybe you go out and you count the spiders. I don't know. You can find different ways to do it. But it's very, very flexible, and each day is different, and some days might be a lot, and some days might be short. And you, you, unschoolers typically do a lot of uh, trips. They go outside the house a lot, and it's very, very loose. And then, of course, you could do something. You could be anywhere in the middle of that. So maybe, maybe a little more organized, a little more structured than the unschooling, but more flexible than the school approach. So you could do so, anything in the middle. So this is one of the great things. Now this, sometimes parents, this seems too much, like, oh my God, uh, what do I do when I first start? And so you have to know your personality. I think it really, what fits you, what fits your children, what fits your kind of lifestyle? Because um, if you try to do something that doesn't fit you, it's going to be very tough and stressful. 
So this is the problem. And of course, your child too, or your children. So for example, I'm very loose. I'm very flexible. I'm loose. I don't like, you know, super scheduled and all that. So I'm an unschooler. This is the approach I take with my children already even. And I will continue to take because uh, that fits me, like trying to follow some very exact schedule and using textbooks and doing all these, uh, you know, uh, you know, very uh, kind of school type activities. I don't like any of that. I, we're going to do projects. I like to get outside the house, lots of trips, focus on the children's interests and my own interests. So for me, unschooling, definitely that I'm quite extreme on that side. Right. But some parents, some people, they, that does not fit them. Some, some like to be very organized. That, that, that would make them stressed out. They're, they worry too much. So it's totally fine if you want to be very organized. You can even um, find online programs for homeschooling where it's very, it's very exact. Like you have exact lessons every single day that your child's following. And they have for all different ages. So it's very structured, very organized. If that's what you want, you just have to research online and you can find there are many of them out there. If you're more like me, you're loose, you're flexible, you're confident, you can teach your kids, then you just you don't need any of that. So this is one of the things I love about it. It's very, very flexible. And as I've said before, you can even be a little different with each child. Maybe one child needs more to be more organized. You need more structure. They do better with that. And another child maybe does better with very loose. It, of course, it, it depends on their ages as well. But you can just be flexible. Don't worry about it. The key point is anything you do, it doesn't matter what you do, it will be better than a school. 100% because you're giving them that individual attention. So you can make mistakes. You can be a little lazy <laughs> and you'll still be better than the school. Okay, so another question. What if my child doesn't like something, right? They don't, they hate math, they hate science, they hate something like that. And she says, all of us will do fine in life knowing the basics of a few subjects, how to read, how to manage your time and money, be a good citizen, good social skills. So this is a great point. Every person does not need to be great at biology or physics, or um, trigonometry, or geometry, or whatever, okay? Your child will have weak points and strong points, just as you do, <laughs> okay? Um, you know, if you're like an engineer and a math person, there's a, good, there's a good chance maybe you're not a good writer. Maybe you're not good with public speaking. Maybe your social skills are not as good. You know, or on the other hand, if you're like a very artistic person, maybe you're great at writing and communication, but you're not so good at like advanced math. So that's totally fine. We don't we don't all have to be, you know, super good at everything. You need some basic skills and your child needs basic skills. Yes, they need to read. Reading is the foundation. If you want to focus on one thing, teaching your children, focus on reading. Reading, 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 reading. And what's number two? Basic math. What do I mean by basic? Basic math is basically like business math, math for money. Because for most people, most of us, that's what we use math for in our daily life, right? When you're adding and subtracting and doing some kind of math, unless, you know, if you're an engineer, of course, you're doing it for your job. But if you're not, what do most of us use math for in our daily lives? Uh, it's, it's something connected to money and business, usually, right? So that's the level of math that most of us need, that pretty much everybody needs. Everybody needs to be able to understand and manage their own money, their, their, their own economic life, financial life. Luckily, that does not require advanced, super advanced math. You know, it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, fractions, decimals, percentages, you know, a few, maybe a few other things, but it, it's, it's not much beyond that. That's, that's kind of a middle school level of math or even less. So, um, 
what you do is you just make, you take your time make, and you can teach any child can learn that. You just be patient. You can even find if math is something you don't feel comfortable teaching, you could find, uh, you know, like a math program. There's uh, what's it called? Khan Academy online. I, I've heard is good. I, I haven't tried it, but I've heard it's very good. So you could uh, you could be very relaxed about reading and other subjects. But for math, maybe they have to follow a very specific program like Khan Academy. That would be fine, too. You could do that. You could mix. So you could be very loose about some things and more structured for other things. So uh, just make sure your child can, you know, manage basic math. And then if they like math, if they're good at math, if they want to do more, then they can continue doing Khan Academy and other programs and they can learn advanced algebra and geometry and even into calculus and all that stuff. Okay, but don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, that comes later. Okay, so she says, what if I'm not good at a subject my child wants to learn about? This is a great question, right? So again, like what if your child wants to learn advanced math and you are not good at math? So she says, what's the answer? Well, you look on the internet, you go to the library, you can find a tutor. You can always pay a private tutor online or in your town to teach that one topic. Uh, or you can uh, actually sign up for an online course, as I just mentioned. So I mentioned Khan Academy, I believe, is free. Uh, at least uh, a lot of their courses are free. So that's a good one for math. I think math is probably the most common one that scares parents. So right there, you sign your you put your child into one of the Khan Academy math courses and they will learn that way because they will learn independently. And then you can always hire a tutor maybe for once a week. If you needed to, I think mostly you won't need to. You can just find some good courses online for any topic that you don't know yourself. The other thing you can do is you can learn. Like let's say your child is interested in insects. Again, just to use that example. You don't know anything about insects. Well, you can learn with your child. It's kind of fun. You're learning together. It sends a good message to your child. You're showing your child that at any age, you can learn new things. And this is how we do it. We go to the library. We find these books. We read about it. We go outside. We start looking at insects and studying them. And then we go back and we read more about them. And you can do it together. So as your child learns about insects, you are also learning. You're learning together like a team. It's not you just talking down to them like a teacher. What about college? This is a good question. What about university? She says, college presents no problem for homeschoolers. Okay, so homeschoolers usually score higher. They get higher test scores. So she's American, so she's talking about like the ACT test, the SAT, the college entrance tests. Homeschoolers get higher test scores than kids who are in school on average. So no problem. And, you know, you can, uh, they can also, if, if necessary, take what's called the GED test. <coughs> if you want them to have a official high school diploma, and this would be international, you could, they could have an American high school diploma and it's called the GED test. It's not very difficult. <laughs> um, so your child could always do that as a homeschooler. It's not usually necessary, but uh, you can always do it if you want to, if you want them to have some kind of official diploma. And, uh, you know, this happens in, in, in countries all around the world. Local children will go to international schools. It's very common. So there might be a, a, a Malaysian child, but they go to an American international school in KL or they go to a British international school. And so they graduate high school and they have an American or a British diploma. And usually that's fine. It's accepted by the local Malaysian uh, universities and it's accepted internationally. So it's no problem. You can, so your child, that's what a GED is. It's the same thing. So they could take the American test and get an American high school diploma. If necessary, like I said, it's not usually necessary. Usually they just need to take the entrance test and they can go into university. So no problem with that. 
Okay, here's a common question, which I always laugh about because it's such a joke. But what about socialization, social skills? As I always say, first of all, school does not teach social skills. School teaches prison, a prison mentality, right? School teaches bullying and the, the, schools teach terrible social skills. So you, children do not learn good social skills at school. They learn in their families, mostly, and somewhat with their friends. As she says, the best social experiences are with a loving family and extended family. Right? That's where children will learn positive social skills that will help them as adults from their own family, their parents, uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents, uh, and of course their own brothers and sisters, learning how to deal with their own bro bro brothers and sisters if they have them. So this is where children will learn social skills, not in a school sitting on their butt most of the day in a, in a desk. Will my child be bored at home doing homeschooling? Sometimes, maybe, she says. Of course, a lot of kids are bored at school, too. <laughs> but, bored, but boredom's not always bad. And she's right about this. Sometimes boredom is good for creativity. And I agree. Like, this idea that kids can never be bored is wrong. It's fine for them to be bored sometimes just as we get bored sometimes, because it's motivation, right? If you're bored, then you have to think, well, what do I want to do? What can I do? What can I do? And it teaches them to get to get more creative, right? If they say, mom, dad, I'm bored, say, all right, well, you're bored. So what do you want to do? Let's do something interesting. What do you want to do? I don't know. Well, think about it. Think about it. Like it, 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 so they're not so passive. You know, in school, they're just waiting for the teacher to tell them what to do all the time. Okay, do this, study this, do this, do this. They become very passive. They don't learn how to um, imagine and create and think of things to do themselves. But of course, small children naturally do this. They just lose it because uh, they go to school and they get used to someone telling them what to do all the time. But even older children can, can recover this ability, right? So let them be bored a little bit. Say, well, think of something. <laughs> you can read a book. You can, you can give them a few suggestions and they might say, no, no, no. Say, well, fine, then you think of something. Figure it out. <laughs> After a few days, they'll, they'll figure it out. They'll start to find things to do. Okay, this is a good one too. Won't I go crazy <laughs> if I'm home all day with my kids? So let's be honest. A lot, a lot, a lot of parents like school because it's free babysitting. Right? They'll say, oh, they'll give other excuses because they because they, it doesn't sound good. But uh, what they really, really, really like about school is they get a break, free babysitting. Now, she says, without demands of school, you can go out and enjoy life with your kids more. You can share your interests. You'll be happier. You'll be a positive example for your kids. Your day will be more relaxed because your day won't be crowded by the schedule of the school. And then she makes a good point. When kids are gone all day in school... They lose the connection with their parents. They forget how to enjoy their parents. And it creates this break, this sort of break in the relationship. And with more and more years, that break can get worse and worse until teenage years. There can, you know, the relationship can actually become quite distant, quite bad between parents and the kids. Well, this is because, of course, you're sending them away for long hours every single day. And every day you're apart for a long time. It's that connection gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And so this is, I think this is the number one benefit of homeschooling, more than the benefits of reading and other things like that, I think, it, and math and all that, I think the benefit is that a strong, 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 loving connection 
between parents and children, and that connection stays strong as they get older. Very important. <laughs> and that's all. All right. So let's get back to our live. All right, I can answer some more questions and we can discuss them, but let's get to our live questions and comments. So it's a very good book. It's it's a nice little uh, introduction, I th I'd say, to homeschooling. So again, it's called Homeschooling, Why and How by Gail Nagasako. Nagasako. Gail Nagasako. Homeschooling. Homeschooling. Why and how? Homeschooling's one word. Homeschooling, why and how? By Gail Nagasako. All right, let's get into our questions and comments. Hey, Fearless Bufendra, good to see you as usual. Nice to see you. Seems like you're busy in your personal life. I have been, but I'm getting back. <laughs> getting back to doing more shows. I'm slowly building back. Arib says, uh, children lose the connection with their parents because the parents work a lot. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, the parents work and the kids go to school. So the, 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 the basic problem is separation. There may be many different reasons for it. School and work are probably the two main ones, right? The kids are sent to a school and they're gone for half the day or longer. And the parents, sometimes both parents, are gone working. And that separation, yeah, guess what? You will lose your connection. The connection will not be as good. So, you know, then parents kind of complain when the kids become older. Oh, they're not, they don't listen to me. They, they don't have such a good connection. Of course not. So you, you have to adapt to this. You have to change this. You must find a way to be with your children. You know, whatever you uh, whatever you have to do, <laughs> figure it out. Do it. But I think homeschooling is... Ah, now this is a great question. And this is was in... It's actually... I skipped it, but it's in the book. Jose Leo de Silva says, How to teach special kids at home. Okay, first of all, so special kids, I, I guess you mean special needs children. Now that... That's a very general word, but but that means like for example, kids uh, who might they're, they're diagnosed with autism. It could be a child who has Down syndrome. It could be a child who has physical uh, problems or issues. Anyway, there's a whole lots of examples. Homeschool those kids, okay? It's even more important for those children. It's so important if you have a special needs kid. Special needs, you know, is kind of the phrase people say. If they have some special needs or some special problem or some special difficulty, you teach them at home, you will do a much better job. The schools put them in some... Pro oh, this, it's terrible. They, they, school is a terrible place for those kids. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay? Uh, I would recommend... I'm just going to give you... Uh, one quick recommendation, Doman International. I'm going to type it in here. If you have a special needs child, Doman International, I use it myself. Find their website, contact them. If you have a special needs children, you know, a child with any of these issues or others that I haven't mentioned, uh, it might be physical. It could be, um, you know, they might have some sort of, uh, you know, learning issues. Uh, whatever it is, I don't care. The other one um, that I recommend is TCU, uh, the Purvis Institute. And this is for like kids who have been adopted, who had medical problems, maybe they were in the hospital, who've had other kind of, you know, kind of more like emotional problems, tra trauma, you know, some very difficult things in their life that have uh, created some problems for them. Uh the TCU Purvis Institute, that's P-U-R-V-I-S, 
they have some really great programs and some great videos. Uh, so you can do it on video online. It's great. Dolman International also you can do online, and they all they will. Uh, you they have some video programs, and in Dolman you can also uh, they'll talk to you on the on like Skype, and you can ask them specific questions and. Uh, um, I've, I've actually I've I've used Doman with for both my children. Uh, even with with Doman, they have uh, even if your child's not special needs, like they have a sleep program. <laughs> we were having problems with our children's uh, sleep, and I uh, talked to them about the sleep, and they had some very good advice, and uh, that was helpful. And they also have programs for kids who, um, you know, oh, so many different uh, special needs. So Doman International. And for kind of special needs, um, and then Purvis Institute for kids who've had more like emotional traumas and things. They're both excellent, but and and what I love about both these programs is again they've they they both strongly believe that it's the parents, the parents, the parents are the best teachers, the parents are the best therapists. Right. So let's say with Dolman, with some of their physical programs, uh, like one of my children was having uh, issues uh, as a baby with some physical problems, like learning to crawl and, and walk. And uh, we were doing for a little while, we were doing this normal uh, therapy, like from the hospital, the doctors. It was not helping. We started doing Dolman and I became the therapist. I became the physical therapist, me, dad, mostly dad. And I thought following their programs, right? So they trained the parents how to do it. And then so we were doing things every day. And man, it was such a fast improvement when we started doing Doman. It just, boom, it's, their programs are fantastic, okay? So you've got to do it yourself. Don't let the, this is a general problem we have is we think that, uh, you know, we want some expert to do everything for us. We want some ex some expert, a teacher, to teach our children. We want a therapist to help our child. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. Okay. First of all, teachers are not experts. Teachers suck mostly. Sorry, it's true. <laughs> Most of them are not very good, um, and the schools are terrible. So you are the best teacher for your child. If your child has a physical issue, you are the best therapist for your child. No one else. You can learn from other people, but you're the best one. You. Okay. Oh, see, this is great. Cicero says, I feel very proud of both my sons and the education their mother and I provide them. Nowadays, we have a biology teacher and an army sergeant in our family. <laughs> nice. Nice. Awesome. Good for you. Good for you. Mom and dad are the best teachers. Mom and dad are the best therapists. Mom and dad are the best everything. That's the truth. No stranger out there with some degree or something. Uh, it doesn't matter. They will never be as good as you. Okay? You can always learn the skill. If your child needs physical therapy, they have some physical problem, you can learn how to help them, and then you do it. You're the therapist at home. You will be 100% better than any expert, any other person. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And this is the basic, uh, this is the, the, the basic philosophy of Doman International. It's their number one, I'd say kind of their, the fundamental, the basic philosophy is that they start from this idea that, that the parents are always the best therapist. And then they train the parents to help their own children. And it works very well. I can, uh, 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 so amazing how the improvement happened with my uh, son. It was great. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to. Uh, there's the chats are coming, so I've, I've missed a whole bunch of them. Well, let me see if I can catch up a few. Uh, how can the? This is a common question. How can kids make friends if they don't go to school? Well, in your in the neighborhood, 
Like I can, I think of my own childhood. I did not make friends in school. I never had friends from school. My friends I made in my own neighborhood. I'm talking about when I was a little kid. And then as they get older, then, you know, you might do some, they might do some other activities. Uh, Maybe they do some sports or jujitsu or some art thing or dancing, whatever, right? But that's how, I mean, that's how adults make friends and connect with people. So uh, school, I don't know, maybe some kids make friends in school. I never did. I always made, fr- I met my friends were all from my local neighborhood. I just go outside and play and see them and meet them on the playground and, uh, or like, you know, different activities if they do different activities, sports and arts and things like that. So there's plenty of ways to meet people. They can, it's not hard. And, and these are better ways to make friends anyway. In school, they're just, you know, they're, they're sitting at a desk and all these strict rules. They're not having fun. It's not a playful environment. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, Arab says, I write my own books on TPR storytelling. Very cool. Nice. Uh, Hilbert says, you already talked about homeschooling in old videos. I would like to see a show where you compare ideas from the past and your ideas now. I'd say my ideas are pretty similar still. I don't think it's changed. My, my feelings and my general ideas about homeschooling have not changed. Uh, in fact, I would say probably now I have my own children. Uh, I'm even more relaxed about it. <laughs> you know, before before I had kids, it was just kind of more ideas, right? Just more um, criticizing the I was I was criticizing the school system. I knew that was bad. But now with my own children, I see that there's no need to worry about it. Like you can just relax. <laughs> That's the main thing I would say to any ch- any parents. If you think about homeschooling, it's just relax. Okay. It's not, it's not that tough. It's not so tough. Just relax. Children are natural learners. Okay. They naturally learn. Okay. They're they're naturally curious. They naturally learn. So you do not need to be super teacher. It's not necessary. Okay. That parents get too stressed out thinking they need some special skills or something. You don't. Just uh, follow their interests, get them reading every day. Start to find some ways to, you know, you do some math and, and some numbers. Reading and math, That if you really keep it simple, reading, math, reading, math. And then other than that, just follow their interests and your own interests. That's the other thing. Maybe you're interested in something. Maybe you think something's cool and you can introduce it to your children, right? Like I like jujitsu. I'm going to teach my kids jujitsu. And if I do it in a fun and relaxed way, they already like it. I'm already teaching them jujitsu, honestly. A little, uh, kind of, you know. We're just playing around with it a little bit, and they both love it. It's just play and rolling around, and we, I teach them a, a couple little, a couple little techniques or something, and it's great, and they love it. So I, that's my interest that I'm sharing with them. I'm not gonna force them to get a black belt, <laughs> right? We're just playing, and but if they like it, they hopefully they keep going with it. You can even see this. I, I saw this from uh, from the Gracies, you know, the Gracie, the famous jujitsu family. There's a documentary called Choke. It's about Hicks and Gracie, one of their one of the great fighters of the Gracie family. And in it, he's playing with uh, I can't remember who it is. I think it's him playing with his son. It is. It's his son Cron, and uh, who's a little baby at that time. And he's just rolling around and he's like kind of putting him into positions like an arm bar position, like a few jujitsu positions. He's just rolling. It's just super playful. He's not doing a serious lesson. He's just playing around and, and his son is just laughing and having a good time. And it's great. And his son did actually become a professional fighter, a very, very good one. Um, one ADCC, I believe, uh, which is a major jujitsu tournament um championship so uh you know that's how it starts though that's how it starts um can you share your education qualifications aj well yeah um uh 
I'm an adult and I learn. You don't need it. Okay. Yeah, I have a master's degree in teaching English uh, as a foreign language, but that it's meaningless. That master's degree is meaningless. You don't need a master's degree. You don't need a bachelor's degree. You don't need any of that. You just need to love learning and read. Reading is the foundation. I can even reduce it down to one skill. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we do, we need some basic math, but uh, and that's that's probably but it's secondary. I would say that reading is the master skill for academics. Of course, we have social skills and other life skills that are very very important. But uh, in terms of uh, like academic type skills reading 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 if you really want to focus on one teaching your children uh that would be the number one skill to focus on and make it enjoyable make it enjoyable they can read serious literature when they get older but when they're young when they're kids make it enjoyable okay let's see Marcelo, good to see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mauricio says, the problem is some parents are spoiled. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe some parents don't want to do it, right? They just, they, they want to send their kids away and have a long break. <laughs> That's the honest truth. Um, you know, I, well, you will pay a price for that. That's that they will pay a price for that. I shouldn't say you, I should they, they will pay a price. And the price is uh, the connection, the relationship with their children will get farther apart. It, may, it won't break necessarily, but it won't be as close. And you'll see it in the teenage years is where you pay the price. Most, where a lot of people pay a price where they lose the closeness and the trust and the close connection with their kids because they've sent them off to school all these years and now the kids are focused on their friends and not on them it's not good uh, Olga oh good to see you Olga Olga my three year old child talks very very badly now i started to play with her a game that can help her how much time in a day do i need to spend learning for three-year-olds not too much keep everything playful with three-year-old my kids are about the same age and one of my children is not talking much one talks non-stop <laughs> i've got twins right so um so the one that's not talking so much now he's talking but it's, he's not talking as much you know, you just, it's more just about all day. Just try to talk to your kid as much as you can. I think rep try to get some repetition in. Like we have a lot of picture books. And uh, they love, my kids love the picture books. So it's a lot of, that's how they learn a lot of vocab. A lot of words. It's just like they have, a, there's a whole book of animal pictures and they just point and we just say, oh, you know, they, 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 they will do it endlessly. They Like they don't get bored. <laughs> so the same book, they'll, They'll look at it a thousand times, right? And they open, oh, you know, shark, turtle, this, that. And they love doing it. So I recommend getting lots and lots and lots of those kind of picture books. They've got these great books where there's just like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And that's a great way where you can just point and say, oh, this is a train and this is this and this is this. And you can talk about it with them. And then they can, there's something they can see. It helps to build their vocab. The other thing you can do is play with uh, objects, things in your house, because that's important vocab. That's those are important words they will use a lot in the beginning, right? You know, plate, spoon, fork, knife, you know, jacket, pants, socks, uh, diaper. Uh, <laughs> you know, all these washing machine, f fridge, refrigerator. You know, oven, you know, on and on and on. All these, all these objects and things, you know, get, if it's safe, obviously nothing dangerous, but anything that's safe, let them play with them and talk about them and use those words. And they need, you know, lots and lots of repetition in the beginning. Later, as they start to learn, they won't need much repetition at all. They will start, it gets fast. 
Like once they really start speaking, they hear a word once or twice, they've got it. But but before that, as smaller babies, and uh, you know, but just before they really start speaking a lot, huge amount of repetition. So that's just keep it playful. Don't force it too much. Second mirror of life says, I, AJ, I'm from India. Good morning. I have two children. Both of them are praising you. Well, that's nice. I am also understand you 100%. I enjoy your uh, work a lot and my children also. Well, that's very nice. Thank you and hi to your children as well. This is great. Fernando Diaz says, I talk English with my kids at home. They learn much, much, much more that way than a regular class. Exactly, exactly. If we want to focus just on English right now, focus just on English, then um, you as an English learner, you're not perfect in English, probably. It doesn't matter. You want to teach your child English, just speak to them in English sometimes, maybe a little every day. Uh, and they are going to get it a lot more from you than sending them to some school or English class. So much better to do that. Great, great example. Faishan Rao says, what are the cons? What are the, you know, the negative points or difficult points of homeschooling? Um, well, it's a little more work for you as a parent. I think it's uh, rewarding. I think it's enjoyable work. But... Obviously, if you send your kid off to school, you got a break from them. And you can be lazy, you can do other things. But if they're at home, well, you can still do that when they're home, especially as they get older. You know, when they're little, when they're little, they don't go to school anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but as they get older, uh, you know, you don't have to be doing something with them every minute. You can have time where you just say, okay, for the next two hours you guys play together or read a book or it's quiet time or whatever and then you do something and just say i'm gonna do something entertain yourself okay you don't have to be there you don't have to perform and entertain them every single minute okay they need to learn how to do it themselves so they can sit down and play with toys or read a book or do something um you know by themselves indoors or outdoors so I think that, you know, that's the other thing maybe uh, is why I say relax as a, when you're homeschooling as a parent. It's totally, you know, you don't need, it's not all day long. You don't have to be, you know, uh, doing some serious teaching for six hours or seven hours every day. It's not necessary. If you're, if you like the more organized approach, you can probably just do it three hours a day, right? Where you're sitting down and you're really focusing and teaching and then the rest of the day, relax play have fun sometimes they do stuff and you can just do you know you have a little break um, or the other way the way I do it is that kind of all day we're hanging out and but there is nothing too serious it's all we kind of we they learn little things sometimes it's all like a little bit but it's all very very relaxed most of the time I like to take them outside I'm kind of the uh, my wife's kind of more the indoor person and I'm the outdoor person. I take my kids out a lot. And, you know, part of that too is they're learning social skills. They're learning how to, like, um, uh, both of them actually are quite good going out already. They're only, they're, they're almost three years old. And my daughter especially, I can take her to a coffee shop or a restaurant. She is so well behaved. It really surprises me. Uh, but it's because I've been doing this with her since she was a baby. So she knows how to sit down and eat with me and chat. And it's really, really nice now because I can go out with her and really enjoy it a lot. Uh, my son's in the, right now he's in a stage where he just wants to run all the time. <laughs> he like he doesn't want to sit still, especially outside. He wants to be moving, moving, moving. So um, <laughs> he's not quite at that level yet. But I still, I take him out, take him out little by little. That this is how they learn to the, those social skills in life and how to behave when you're outside and how to behave around other people. You got to get them out there and do it. And you got to do it as a parent, as an adult. So they see, they look at you and they see how you do it and you can teach them. 
Okay, Augustina Segovio says, I have a girl with ADHD. What do you recommend to help her in homeschooling? Okay, first of all, uh, Augustina, Dolman International. Again, I'll type it again. Contact them. They will help you. Okay, because they do this. They, they, they work with kids like this. They will help you. Second, um, she may, your girl may or may not really have this. And many, many times this is a nonsense. It's a, I will say, a bullshit diagnosis. Um, you, you pull them out of school. You maybe adapt their diet a little bit, cut out all the sugar. Um, you do some other things. And gradually you might find that your girl's attention gets better and better. She might just be bored. She might just be bored of school and bored of in general. And... Uh, she might do better at home. We'll see. You can try it. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, keep things shorter. This is true for a lot of kids, uh, even just people, <laughs> that um, you teach in smaller little pieces, right? If Like if you're working on, let's say you're working on reading and you're doing uh, phonics, you know, the sounds of the letters, or you're doing even whole words, you're just doing little flashcards. Don't do it for 20 minutes. It's too long. You do it for five minutes. Boom, fast. Doman International has a nice reading program. And it's fast, fast, fast. It's quick. You just show the card. Boom. Show the card. Boom. You show the card. 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 It's done in like two minutes. And then done and you do something else. And then maybe an hour later, you do it again. But again, it's only like two, three minutes. Each little lesson, if you want to call it that, each little reading practice is very short and quick. And then you do something else, take a break, do some other thing. And, but, it, but you do it a lot. So it's a lot of lessons, a lot of uh, repeating those activities, the practice, the learning. But for short little periods of time, all day long, you do it a little and then you just do something else. You quit, have, relax, run around, be active physically, come back, do it again, and then a little bit. And this works, this works well for all kids, but it would work probably very well for your girl. Try it. All right. Oh, cool. So, um, Elbert at Brazil says, My life became different after being introduced to AJ7 rules three years ago. Since that time, uh, me and my nine-year-old daughter started to watch TV only in English. See, this is awesome. This is what I mean. Like, uh, So, he's learning English. And what does he do? He just does it with, he introduces this to his daughter and now they're learning together. It's not him forcing her, you know, you must do this. It's, uh, it's them as like a team. They're both learning. She sees her dad learning English and listening to the videos and everything. And then she's doing it with him. What a great way to connect. They're both doing this, learning this together. Right? It's, 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 it's a great way to, for her to learn. It's also a great way for her to connect to her father. Right? So you can't always do this, but it's very nice when you can learn something together with your children. It's a very nice experience because it's like it's something you're sharing now. It's not always just you're the boss and forcing them to do something now it's like uh, oh we're both learning together and they get to see that hey dad's not perfect mom's not perfect oh they they have to learn things too mom and dad also they're bad at something and they have to work and study and then and practice and oh and then they get better too and they you're showing them that learning is for all of your life what a great example Zuhurul so Islam says schools are terrible for smaller students who have bigger students to sit with, always teasing and annoying them. Bullying. The result, school becomes a hateful torture center. That's a great phrase. <laughs> school becomes a hateful torture center. Yes, I agree. 
yeah, school, it's like, you know, I, I'm not joking when I say school is like prison for kids. It's the same mentality. It, it does create the same social structure like of prison. You know, if you, if you read about prisons or hear about prisons, it's like, you know, of course, a terrible environment, the strong, you know, do, uh, bully and do terrible things to the people who are weaker. That's what happens in schools. That's what happens in schools. The stronger kids, the meaner kids, uh, tease and do terrible things to the weaker kids. And then those weaker kids do things that are terrible to the even weaker kids. And the poor little guys at the bottom, who maybe are extra small or extra gentle, they get tortured, psychologically tortured, by everybody. It's hell. Take them out. Don't, 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 don't do, don't let your child experience that. And honestly, it's not good for the bigger kids either. What are they learning? They're learning to be bullies. They're learning to, they just push everybody around who's smaller than them. And uh, that will be great for them for a while until they become adults and they meet someone who's not gonna let them do it. <laughs> Some of these, you know, big bullies end up becoming criminals when they become adults because they think, ah, you know, I can do anything I want. And then they find out that eventually they can't and they can suffer some pretty big, uh, pretty bad consequences. Some bad things can happen to them. It's not good for the bullies either. It's not a good way to live for anybody. Hateful Torture Center. <laughs> well said. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. This is so funny. Uh, Faishan Rao says, My kid is three years old. Why does he always do the opposite of what I say? Because <laughs> he's three. <laughs> uh, and he doesn't like to share, right? <laughs> uh, how can I help him? So this is every three-year-old in the world, okay? <laughs> Mine are going through this too. Um, because they have to learn this. They have to learn it. They don't understand. This is how we teach them. And you teach them as patiently as you can through repetition. And it takes, you know, it takes a few years. Um, you know, they want to do something and then they, you, they, you say no and then they go crazy. <laughs> it's kind of, eventually it becomes funny. Like in the first, you're kind of like, what's going on? And then, uh, uh, then it becomes kind of funny because you say like, I mean, it's, it's so funny now because uh, like with the, my kids that it's always some small little thing, you know, like they want, I don't know, let's say they want a piece of bread and I say no, and then they go ah! and they fall on the floor and they scream for like 30 minutes, you know, <laughs> like, um, it's just such an overreaction, but they're just learning to deal with frustration. I think that's, you know, they don't know. Dealing with frustration. Uh, you know, when they're little babies, it's just they cry because they're hungry or sleepy. But now they're getting older and they have other ideas. They want to do things and they start and then they discover, oh, I can't always do what I want to do. Right? Sometimes it's dangerous or whatever reason. So um, there's a period now. It's why it's called the terrible twos. <laughs> uh, it's around two and three years old, especially where they will go crazy and overreact anytime you say no anytime you they get frustrated so you got to try to just be patient <sighs> and you just you know <laughs> sometimes you just let them cry until they stop there's not much you can do when they're going crazy and uh you know you try to patiently say okay sorry <laughs> and little by little they learn little by little they learn to handle the frustration you know, frustration is not easy, even for us adults sometimes. So it's hard. It's hard when you're tired, but you just got to try to be patient and calm. I'm not always calm, <laughs> but I try. Okay, a couple more and then time to go.
Oh, cool. This is a great success story. Samuel Rosario says, I learned about the seven rules in 2012. In 2015, I was already very fluent. Today, I'm a coach on productivity for American and Canadian business people. Thank you, AJ. Greetings from Dominican Republic. Wow. So in his job, he coaches, he teaches Americans and Canadians, obviously, um, native speakers of English. That's quite an achievement. Fantastic. That's a great success story. Wow. That's really good. Impressive. Impressive. Very, very, very impressive. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm kind of going back over some old some of the old questions. Let me see. I think. I think I got all the most of the ones. My pros may weigh the cons, vice versa. Um. <laughs> I think I've got most of these. Most of the questions. Okay, if you have a question, now's the time. Yeah, it's very hard to tell a story. In my classes, people forget they speak English. Can I achieve? Oh, can I achieve success in IELTS? This is an English question, test question through effortless English. As Aburoman. Um, yes, we've had many of our members uh, score very well on the IELTS test or the TOEFL test. So for sure, however, I, you know, my courses are not specifically focused on those tests. So I recommend not focusing too much on those tests. I know some of you have to do it for a job or something, um, but just focus on improving your English speaking ability, your general English ability, and the test should go up. I and mean, that's the whole point of the test, right? Don't get too focused on the, just the test itself. Elielson says, thank you. You encourage me not to give up on learning English. You are welcome. All right. Well, I think that's about it then. So again, homeschooling, the, the, the book we were discussing today, Homeschooling How and Why. Gail Nagasako, I believe it is. Gail Nagasako. And in general, I just encourage you all, teach your own children. Teach your children. Teach your children. Teach your children. Okay? And I think that uh, someone mentioned early up in the comments something about, you know, with all the um, lockdowns and craziness and school closings that a lot of people have discovered homeschooling for the first time a lot of people had to try it and I think that's great it's one of the benefits <laughs> of what happened and I think that it's a great you know it's a great thing that I think that too many people are nervous about it this is my number my personal message to you if you're interested at all in homeschooling your children um, the main point I would make is just relax you know Today we discussed some of the common questions and people worry about it and da, 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 what if I just take your kids out of the schools and teach them at home? It'll be fine. It will be fine. You know, there might be little, you might you have little problems. You have got to figure some things out as you go, but overall you'll be fine. You're going to be fine. It's not so difficult. It's not difficult. And uh, there's no need to be super stressed about it. You can be very relaxed about it. Take your time. I promise you, you will do a great job and your children will learn. They will learn. All right. That's all for now. As always, join my VIP program. Remember, I'm going to do a chat with VIP members soon. So VIP members, watch your email. I will send a link and in the information. If you want to join that chat, then join the VIP program. Lots of love to you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. EffortlessEnglishClub.com